Hey folks, Matt Easton here. So, two points to make. Um, first of all, I really, I've, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but I really want to reiterate this point that Damascus steel is um, traditionally in the past, up until about the 19th century, referring to something very different to pattern welded steel. But in the modern world, or should we say since sometime in the 19th century, it has become very, very common for people to refer to pattern welding as Damascus steel. But in the past, it was not. I'm going to use the term woots here to refer to something else. Now, let's just qualify those two things for a minute. So what is pattern welding? Well, I'm sure most people watching this channel will understand that pattern welding is taking a series of strips or bars of um, steel or iron and steel and essentially twisting them together um, a bit like a metallic rope and forge welding the whole thing so that you get pretty patterns um, when you etch that blade. Because of course, you You've got different types of steel or iron uh, essentially bound together, forge welded together and when you apply acid to the finished surface it has di slightly differing effects, um, oxidization effects on those different types of iron and steel and you get a pretty pattern. Okay so famously the um, you, the Viking era kind of you know the, the Anglo-Saxons, the Franks and these kind of earlier um, uh, Viking era um, blades sometimes featured pattern welding, not all of them. Um, not just swords of course, also we find it sometimes on um, saxes, on very occasionally on axes and sometimes even on spears. Um, but pattern welding as a as a thing has been used all over the world. So um, a, a place where pattern welding was sometimes used was uh, indeed on Southeast Asian weapons, most uh, perhaps most famously on krises. We find it on the dagger sized krises from places like Java, um, but equally we find it on these large Filipino Moro krises as well. And this is a pattern welded blade where we can see the uh, lines in the blade um, going along and uh, laminations essentially. Um, and um, pattern welding was also used in Europe, as we've mentioned, back in the migration era in the early medieval period. But additionally, it was also carried right the way through to the 19th century. And here we have a German, in this case Bavarian, officer's sabre, which also features a pattern welded blade. Now, by this point, this was often referred to as Damask or Damascus. And in fact, some German swords actually have the word um, Damask or Dama Damastil um, etched into the blade or engraved in some cases into the blade to say that it's Damascus steel. But actually, it's not Damascus steel, it's pattern welded steel. And I'll go a bit more into that in a second. Um, and in, in fact, in some cases, um, so here's a sword that I will be talking more about soon. And in fact, I'll be talking more about that Bavarian sword as well. This has actually got a pattern etched on the blade. And this is etched Damascus. So something we find on German made swords sometimes is Damas steel, which means Damascus steel or actually what they mean is pattern welded steel or echt Damask, which means etched Damascus. So below here we have etched Damascus. In other words, they've etched with acid a pattern onto the blade. Essentially, they've painted with acid a, a picture of what looks like pattern welding or you could even say woots onto this blade. And up here we've got a blade which is made of actual at least two perhaps more different types of steel um, forge welded together into a pretty pattern. And those are pattern welding. However, Woots, true Damascus, is something else entirely. It is a crucible steel. So the first thing to say is pattern welding is simply taking a bunch of steels, twisting them together, forge welding them together and making them into a blade. Okay. Crucible steel involves melting, uh, liquefying the steel so that you can remove all of the crap from it, all of the slag, for example, from it that you don't want. So it's a crucible steel, but not only that, um, there are different types of crucible steel. Something that's a crucible steel doesn't automatically become woots. One of the things that characterizes woots, and here we have a, an Indian, probably 18th century Qatar, that is um, woots steel. Um, and 
The thing that characterizes Woots is that it has a pattern on the blade, but it doesn't look like a pattern welded pattern. Indeed, you could create pattern welding that looked like a Woots pattern, but Woots pattern looks more like raindrops and is sometimes described as watered steel. And in fact, you do get different types of Woots patterns, and we know that different types of Woots patterns were found in different regions, different areas, and even it, it's implied in the sources that different patterns of Woots had were believed to have different properties and benefits and that some woots was regarded as better than some other woots um, but all woots still was regarded as really really good and it seems um, the research as it currently stands seems that the reason you get a pattern in some of this crucible steel to create woots is something to do with vanadium and the um, the presence of vanadium of a certain percentage in the steel and some um, some ores, some iron ore taken from some places in the world naturally have this vanadium in and if they happen to have that vanadium in when you liquefy them, when you make a crucible steel out of them and you um, forge them in the correct way, a very specific way, when you etch them with acid you get the um, damask, uh, damask pattern. Okay, So originally damask or damascus steel was Woots steel, okay? It was a Woots crucible steel, completely different to a pattern welded steel, okay? Not the same thing. So when we see shows like Forged in Fire and they call pattern welding Damascus, they're kind of wrong, but they were also kind of right from a 19th century perspective because in, from the 19th century onwards, it certainly did become quite normal to refer to Woots uh, sorry, to refer to pattern welding as Damascus rather than, and, and to refer to Woots as the crucible steel, when originally the Damascus steel was like Woots, it was a crucible steel. So it all gets a bit confusing. Uh, but to cut a long story short, we've essentially got pattern welding, we've got crucible steel, and we've got Woots. And Woots is a type of crucible steel, but pattern welding, pattern welded steel, is doesn't need to be a type of crucible steel, although you could use crucible steel of different types to make pattern welding. I hope that's somewhat clear. But the second point I want to make is one of my um, teenage heroes, shall we say, Mike Lodes, has a new YouTube channel. And obviously the link's gonna be below. And videos with uh, Mike Lodes, Mike Lodes has been on tons of TV programs. He's been on Time Commanders and loads of documentaries, reconstructing Egyptian chariots and all kinds of other documentaries since I was a kid. And actually you could say that in a way, although HEMA didn't exist yet, um, you could say HEMA didn't exist until I named it HEMA, but um, the, the practice of a historical European martial arts as an activity, uh, so historical fencing, whatever, WMA, whatever you want to call it, didn't really exist until I was around, kind of in my late teens, should we say 18, 20 years old. But earlier than that, people like Mike Lodes and a few other people in the world were looking at trying to reconstruct historical weapons and combat styles. And it hadn't yet become a formalized activity, didn't really have a unified name, it wasn't yet called Western Martial Arts or HEMA or whatever, um, but they were doing it. And I, as a teenager, came across one of Mike Lodes' videos. In fact, I actually met Mike Lodes um, back when I was about 15 years old for the first time. I've met Mike Lodes a few times. I met him at the Wallace Collection where we both um, were involved with a, a presentation there many, many moons ago now. I don't know if he remembers. Um, but uh, when I was about 15 years old, I was at the Park Lane Arms Fair because I was starting to collect antique swords. I was already very interested in this stuff as a teenager. Um, my dad had taken me to the Park Lane Arms Fair, which is one of the most prestigious um, annual antique arms fairs in central London. And um, Mike Lodes was there selling his videos. And at the time, I believe that he was predominantly a stage and screen um, combat director. So he was teaching people how to fight for, um, for TV and movies and theatre. Um, and he'd made a video and this video was called something like how to fight in the Renaissance way or sword fighting in the Renaissance way or something like that. And um, unfortunately I don't still have it. It was on VHS and I got rid of all my VHSs a long time ago. But if you look around online maybe you can find it somewhere. And um, I watched this video a lot as a kid and it was extremely influential on me. It was my first exposure to the treatises, the sources that we study in HEMA. He mentions George Silva, Kelly Morozzo, um, Camilo Agrippa, all of these 
all of these really important treatises, which really people weren't studying in the way that we now study them, you know, where you can actually say, oh, a person is able to fence in the style of um, Morozzo, for example. That didn't exist back then, but he was aware of the treatises and he referenced them and he showed pictures from them. And this was incredibly influential and pivotal on my life, actually. So huge kudos to, kudos to um, Mike Lodes. Go and look at his channel, but the reason I'm talking about Mike Lowe's on this video is he's just released a 50 minute documentary, absolutely fantastic documentary, about, um, about the, the quest essentially to try and reconstruct Damascus or Woot's steel. Um, and now I know that some people in the world claim that they are already reproducing Woot's. Um, and this may or may not be the case. I'll, I'll let you decide for yourself, but go and watch that doc documentary. The link's below. It's 45, 50 minutes long that you will not regret watching. It's a fantastic docu documentary put together by Mike himself. So I think he produces and directs it and he's the narrator of it. And it is really, really fascinating. And if you want to know more about Woots or Damascus steel and indeed how it's different to pattern welded steel, um, and the quest to try and reconstruct this type of steel that was legendary and probably one of the greatest pre-industrial age um, blade manufacturing processes that, that the world has ever seen. If you want to learn more about that, go and watch that video uh, as soon as you get the opportunity. Um, but thanks a lot for watching. I hope that's been somewhat interesting. There is a huge amount that could be said on this topic, but I am in no way an expert on this and I don't understand all the science. But that documentary is the best place to go and find out more. So go and watch it now or as soon as you can. Cheers folks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We have extra videos on Patreon and you can follow us on Facebook.